This is Find Your Dream Job, the podcast that helps you get hired, have the career you want, and make a difference in life. I'm your host, Mac Pritchard. I'm also the founder of Max List. It's a job board in the Pacific Northwest that helps you find a fulfilling career. Every Wednesday, I talk to a different expert about the tools you need to find the work you want. Does the idea of customizing your resume for every application overwhelm you? Our guest this week says it's not only essential, but you can do it in 10 minutes or less. Joining us today in the MaxList studio to talk about this is Rainy Lunky. She's a recruiter and certified human resources professional. And Rainy recently started her own company, R2R Strategic Recruiting. Well, Rainy, let's begin with the why here. Does a listener really need to customize a resume for every application? Absolutely. For sure. I think it is what you need to do in today's job market. Um, The spraying and praying method is no longer valid. Um, We have to be targeted and customized. So... But, Without but a why? Doubt, yeah. I, why doesn't spray and pray look work? Because isn't it just a numbers game in the end? Well, I think when you, <laughs> no, when you when you ask job seekers, is that working for them? I haven't heard anyone say yes, <laughs> and I meet with job seekers regularly, and those that are being successful are taking their time to customize their resume, understand the company, understand their skills and how they can apply them to their resume and that job um, is proving a a much better return on just submitting a ton of resumes out there. And why does it make a difference, Rainey, to customize your resume? It makes a difference because as a recruiter myself who has screened hundreds of resumes in sometimes just a day, you are, that's what is, that. that's either screening you in or out. And if you don't take the time to customize your resume to that specific job, you, you aren't, you aren't going to get looked at. So why does it matter to an employer if they, if somebody has great qualifications, excellent uh, education, it, shouldn't that be enough? It should, but most of, it, it, they don't see that. That's the issue. They don't see that. You have to use the right keywords, the right formatting, and the right approach. So say it's a sales manager job. Not all job descriptions are the same. And they use different words. They are looking for different qualifications. And you have to mirror your resume to what they are looking for and the keywords that they're searching for. Is that just a technicality or does it really increase the your attractiveness to an employer to use those keywords? It sounds it, like a kind of a trick uh, that really shouldn't matter in the end. So for sales, for example... You may see account manager, you may see sales, you may see client relationship manager. Those can all mean the same thing, and you might be doing similar things, but as a recruiter who is typically the one looking at your resume, may not in their mind, because the reality is we have a lot of untrained, unskilled recruiters in roles, um, that may not understand a client relationship manager could be the same as a sales manager. Um, and that gets very complicated when you're talking about technical roles. So you have to speak the language that the employer uses exactly. if you want that position. Yes. Help, you know, take the mindset of help, help me help you, you know, um, you have to help yourself and that recruiter or hiring manager see your skills for who they are trying to hire. So let's talk about what customizing a resume means. Some people, for example, I think believe that if they're pursuing two or three very different jobs, they need to have two or three very different resumes. Is that what you're talking about here, Rainey? Yes, if they're if you're interested in applying applying for a sales manager or a 
customer service manager, probably different jobs or different resumes. Um, But it starts with the format of your resume. And yes, I agree that it should, you should spend 45 minutes to an hour working your resume and cover letter for the positions you're applying for. Now, if you have a formatted resume... So I want to stop there yes. and ask you, because we talked about doing it in 10 minutes or less. I yes. imagine the listeners thinking, wait, 45 yes, totally. minutes... Uh, what's going on here? Do Absolutely. You, and I think is there some foundational work you recommend people take? 100%. And I think that's what I want to talk about today. Um, because for those that are customizing their resume and they are spending 45 minutes to an hour, awesome, great. You know, and if you enjoy doing that, because there are those one off jobs here that do, keep doing that. But there's a way to format your resume um, to allow you to see a job and update your resume with, within 10 minutes. And that the key to that, and what I want to focus on and not overwhelm job seekers who are listening, is it, it, it's a very easy way. And that is you have your resume, you have your header. And I want to dig into that, but I, I also know there's a listener out there saying, well, wait a minute, would I be better served by investing the 45 minutes or will... Uh, following this format you're about to outline, Rainey, and spending 10 minutes uh, or less, will I get the same results? You have to start, you have to have a foundational resume. And you have to be confident within that resume. I look at resume, I I can't tell you how many resumes I've looked at in my career, but it's a lot. And even for for individuals that have similar roles as mine. Um, But I'm not a resume writer. And a couple years ago, I would say, oh, I would never pay to get, you know, pay somebody or work with a resume writer. Today, I have a completely different approach on that. I would absolutely spend the time to work with somebody to build a foundational resume for me to work on. And then once you've done that work, it is possible to customize your resume for different positions in 10 minutes or less by having a format that allows you to adapt your document. Is, Absolutely. Is that uh, Absolutely. W- what you recommend? Mm-hmm. For sure. So let's talk about what that format looks like and what matters and, and how people can make the most of that. Mm-hmm. So how do you do that? You basically need to start with the job description, the, the position that you're applying for. And you need to understand that role and you need to read that position. And what I want you to focus on is I in 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 the job descri- most job descriptions will have a job requirements section. It is usually a bulleted point a bullet pointed section. There's usually anywhere from four to ten bullet points. I want you to look at those first four bullet points. It's typically consistent that the first bullet point will either talk about education, and the second point bullet point will talk about years of experience. The next three to four bullet points are going to outline either required skills or nice to have or desired skills. Beyond that, it's usually talking about team building and communication, more of those soft skills. How do you tell what is required and what's nice to have? It does it explicitly say required and desired? Most all job descriptions these days will either say required, desired, or nice to have. Um, and there, it, it does say that for compliance reasons from the HR from the HR side of things. So, so you're looking at that list of bullets, really hone in on that two yes. or three categories. What what do you do next, Rainy? Well, print you know, print the job description. Take a highlighter. I mean, you've got to understand those words. You've got to read between the lines. From there, what I want you to do is really ask yourself, am I qualified for this position? If you're not, at least 70% qualified, don't waste your time. But don't if, rule yourself out if, you're, if you don't have 100% of the qualifications. Exactly. Is that yes, correct? Exactly. Exactly. From there, I want you to look at, I want the part that you're going to customize your resume is the first section. Eliminate objective, 
and replace it with professional summary. Many people still use a professional summary and an objective, but they also write in, write it in sentence format. Make that bullet pointed. I want you to match your professional summary with at least those four to six bullet points of the job description. And how do you do that? How do you recast what the job description says while being authentic and and accurate in Mm -hmm. describing your qualifications. So for example, let's just say we're looking at a sales manager job description. The first bullet point says 10 years of sales experience within a SaaS organization. The second- SaaS is services, uh, software is service, correct? Yes. Second bullet point may say, let's just say bachelor's degree preferred. Third bullet point may say um, managing a million-dollar portfolio. I want you to go to your resume. Those first three bullet points, you need to say, you know, 10-plus years of sales experience in a SaaS environment. And use the word SaaS if that's what was on the job description. Don't say software. Use SaaS because that's what the recruiter is is honing in on those key words. Again, you need to speak the language of the employer. Exactly. Your second bullet point, mention your education and then some. Um, Third bullet point, again, you're mirroring what the requirements are of that job. I tell job seekers, we hear all the time, recruiters spend less than a minute. A lot of times it's 20 seconds reviewing resumes. If the recruiter only looks at that first professional summary, that should clearly indicate that you are qualified for this position, whether they look at where you've worked, your tenure, anything beyond that. So that's the section that I want you to focus on customizing your resume. And that's the most important because that's what a recruiter will look at when looking at your resume. Well, I want to pause here, Rainey. This is a great conversation. I want to take a quick break. And when we return, we'll continue our conversation with Rennie Lunke about how to customize your resume in 10 minutes or less. To get the job you want takes more than customizing a resume. You'll also need to ace the interview. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you knew the interview questions in advance? While you can't predict everything a hiring manager might ask, you can be certain you will get behavioral interview questions. And you can get a list of the most common ones today. Go to maxlist.org slash questions. We'll send you a free copy of 100 behavioral interview questions you need to know. Get yours today. Go to maxlist.org slash questions. Employers ask behavioral interview questions to get examples of how you've dealt with challenges in the past. To answer, you need relevant stories and a strategy for telling them. So we give you a four-part system for responding to any behavioral interview question. You'll learn how to talk about the problem you faced, the action you took, the result you produced, and the lesson you learned. Wouldn't you like to do this in your next job interview? Go to maxlist.org slash questions. It's free. Now, let's get back to the show. We're back in the MaxList studio. I'm talking with Rainy Lunky. She's a recruiter and certified human resources professional. She's also the founder of R2R Strategic Recruiting. Now, Rainy, before the break, we were talking about how to customize your resume in 10 minutes or less. You were emphasizing how important it is to get that professional summary section right and to look at a job posting and mirror back the most important points uh, that, that you see there that matter to the employer. What else would you uh, recommend a listener think about about the professional summary? Yes, I want to clarify this isn't a copy and paste scenario. You have to use the right words, but also add your personality to this. Um, So, and I know that's difficult to understand um, for job seekers who may just be struggling putting a resume together. 
But this is where you have to dig deep into yourself and find a connection to the job and the company and the culture. That's challenging to do in a bulleted list with four to six bullets Mm -hmm. and not a lot of space. How do you see people do that? The people you, the, the candidates that stand out when you're reviewing resumes as a recruiter? It's finding that balance of sharing your personal passion, um, but not sharing too much. Creating curiosity, right? Leaving them with something wanting more. Can you give us an example of what you've seen uh, work well or something that stood out in an application that's crossed your desk recently? Yeah, for example, let's talk about a um, project, a technical project manager role. you, this role may not require somebody that is Scrum certified or mention um, that Agile is a requirement, but maybe you have done your research and you've looked at other kinds of roles that they have posted, uh, like other technical positions, and you have, you've noticed that it's an Agile environment. That's where you want to start pulling in things that are going to grab their attention. You know, sales manager, 10 plus years of experiencing experience working in agile SaaS environments. So again, this is based on homework you've done where you've looked at the website, you've studied the job description, and you're trying to tease out things that your research has shown that matter to the employer. Yes, yes. The other, the other piece that um, I I find very appealing as an individual reviewing resumes is if a job seeker has a recommendation from a past manager or an employer, whether you have it on LinkedIn or a performance review, copy and paste that and put that in that section that validates your experience. So you recommend putting a, a quotation from a, somebody who's a fan of your work in the professional summary section. Absolutely. If it, if it is talking about a specific requirement that they're looking for, that's going to set you apart. I mean, I tell job seekers, I talk to people all the time. I talked to a, a director um, of IT last week, and she was applying for a position here with a well-known company, and she was so excited about this role. She sent me her resume. She said she customized it. I said, I don't see how you're even qualified for this role. Keep in mind as a job seeker, you need to tell yourself, and I know this is overwhelming and frustrating, but you need to tell yourself, there's at least 50 other applicants for this job. How am I going to set myself apart? And it's those little creative things that you can do without giving, without writing a a huge, you know, 10-page resume and sharing all of the information. That, that's not what you want to do as a job seeker, and that's certainly not what we want to see as a hiring representative. And there are two things I love about your suggestion here, about including quotations. Uh, one is it taps into the power of social proof. And I think everybody, uh, when they reflect on it, uh, recognizes the power of things like Yelp reviews, Google yes. reviews, if we're picking a restaurant or making a choice about a hotel or looking for um, a service, we go to those places and and reviews matter to us. Mm -hmm. The other thing that stands out for me is uh, the power of referrals. And obviously, if you can pick somebody who is known to a hiring manager to include in the quote, that's that has to be very powerful, mm-hmm. doesn't it? A hundred percent. And it, and it's different than the other resumes that are coming through. I'm curious in your experience as a recruiter, if you see a hundred resumes, how many candidates have taken the time to customize their resume? That I can notice, maybe two percent. That's a very striking figure, and it brings me back to something I hear from candidates a lot, and I certainly remember this when I was applying for jobs. You want to stand out. Mm -hmm. You want to be different. And so what you're suggesting here is a way to do that. Absolutely. And I hear so many job seekers say, but I wrote this amazing cover letter, and that's awesome, and I encourage you to continue to do that. But typically, 
all recruiters are starting with a resume and they're not starting with a cover letter. And they're not even looking at the cover letter until you have made it into that short list. So while that's great to do a cover letter and really customize it, and I encourage you to do that, to get to that next step, you've got to put the effort into your resume. Okay, so I want to talk about the amount of time it takes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say 10 minutes or less, you're talking about investing in revising and updating the professional summary. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the more you get into the the flow of, I need to start with the job description. I need to understand this job description. I need to look at the requirements. And you know your first six bullet points are typically going to be talking about your years of experience, your education, and then those other those other course those other core requirements that the job is looking for. One of the things I do want to point out um, because I talk to so many job seekers around the whole ageism discrimination thing. Um, and I say one of the ways that you can customize your resume and not be looked at as somebody that is overqualified when, in a job description, it says 10 years experience and you have 20. Don't put 20. Put 12 plus years of experience. It shows that you're qualified and a little more. Um, not the 20 years. It, it uh, Unfortunately, that may be sending the message of you're way overqualified, you're over compensation, and a variety of other things. Right. And ageism in hiring, of course, is real. It's a fact of life. It's wrong. It's illegal. But Absolute, it does happen. Absolutely. And the strategy you're suggesting here is a way to get over uh, that, to get in front of a hiring manager. Yes. And so that you can make your case. So I, what about... Uh, outside of the professional summary, Rainey, are there other sections of the resume that you recommend people tweak? And again, I'm thinking about that 10-minute limit mm-hmm, here. Mm-hmm. I, it go, it's it's the keywords. It is definitely the keywords, and you can do a you know a, a control F and and search for you know if if your resume um, throughout talks about sales and in the job description they're talking about account management. Control find replace that sales role with account management. How do you recommend people get clear about the keywords that matter to a hiring manager? Because job descriptions, they there can be hundreds of words there. How do you suss out which ones really matter? I recommend, I'm old school in this way, um, print out the job description and go through it with a highlighter. And you're going to start to see words that are repeating. I do that when I'm helping a company or hiring manager recruit. Um, For example, I'm working with a company now, and I printed out their job description. I highlighted, you know, these 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 words um, that just kept repeating themselves over and over and over. Account manager, OEM experience. Um, So to me, I needed clarification going in, and I knew that. As a job seeker, I'm looking for those core those core words and skills from an individual. Okay. So to summarize your strategy, what I'm hearing is focus on the professional summary, pay attention and study the job posting, make sure that you understand what's required and what's desired, and address those uh, requirements and desired qualifications in the summary. And then also pay attention to the keywords and look for opportunities throughout your resume to uh, to find and use those keywords that matter to the employer. Because in the end, speaking the language of the employer is going to give you a leg up on your competitors. And if you that's the strategy, and if you execute it, you'll be doing something that ninety eight percent of the other applicants aren't doing. Absolutely. And that really makes a difference as a recruiter when you're looking at resumes. Absolutely. I I can't spend an enormous amount of time trying to figure out how that person's experience matches what I'm looking for. It's got to be clear. I also want to just give a shout out to your point about qualifications because I think often people think if they don't have 100% they mm-hmm. shouldn't apply. Mm-hmm. You did make it clear at the start of our conversation you need to be qualified. Mm-hmm. But for you as a recruiter, 
the cutoff is 70%. It is. That seems kind of low to me. Why, why is 70% acceptable? It's, it is and it isn't, you know. And I say 70% because I think that is, that is a good gauge. Um, there are companies where, especially those government, city um, organizations, those requirements are, are hard fast. Um, other companies, especially software companies, they often are hiring different levels of, of candidates. And there is a lot more, I would say, wiggle room there. Um, you don't want to waste your time applying for positions that you're just not going to be considered for. And I think 70% is that good mark to focus on those roles that you are qualified for. And for a listener who might be considering applying for a government job, is it 100% mm-hmm. or, or nothing, or is there some wiggle room there? Uh, in my experience, and what I would recommend, if you don't meet the required skills, don't bother applying. For a government job. But yes. for other uh, in other sectors, there's flexibility, yes. and 70% is a good cutoff. In my experience, yes. Okay. Well, it's been a terrific conversation. Rainy, now tell us what's next for you. Well, I'm here locally in Portland, and I focus on helping companies here improve their hiring results. I work with companies in regards to improving the process, the hiring process, training internal recruiters and hiring teams. And that's what my focus is. My my, my uh, passion is sitting down with job seekers when I have the time to do that and give back in a variety of ways from that front. Well, I know people can learn more about your new company uh, and your services there by visiting your website, r2rrecruiting.com. And we'll be sure to include that in the show notes as well. Now, Rainy, you've given us a great strategy and a lot of good ideas today about how to customize that resume and why to do it. What's the one thing you want a listener to remember about how to customize a resume in 10 minutes or less? It's easy. It's the professional summary. But regardless of that, the biggest thing is having confidence in your resume. If you don't have confidence no one else is going to believe in your skills. So use your resume as a vehicle to build up your confidence. Make the most of the job interviews you get after you customize your resume. Learn how to answer any behavioral interview question. Get your free copy today of 100 behavioral interview questions you need to know. Go to maxlist.org slash questions. Again, that's maxlist.org slash questions. On our next show, our guest will be Lori Erdman. She's a human resources consultant at Cambia Health Solutions. Whatever your occupation, you will likely change careers several times. Lori will share six steps she sees successful career changers take. Would you like to know what these people do? Join us next week. Until next time, thanks for letting us help you find your dream job.